Hey, this is Scott of the Way of Coding.com. Today I'm going to go over a simple game loop with scaled graphics. This is all on Android and Java. So let's get started. We're in the main activity here. We also have a custom view and a layout. I went over a lot of this in a previous tutorial you can check out on uh, using custom views and then having it get the size of the screen before it actually starts drawing that view out, which is really helpful. And I use that technique in this uh, tutorial as well. So we're in the main activity here. We just get, we make a custom view, and then we call this uh, get view tree observer add on global layout listener, which is the thing that uh, happens once you're it's able to once the system is able to get the size of your view, and it does all that stuff, and then it calls actual view code. So we'll move on to the game loop here. We've got our custom view. We uh, make a few variables. What happens here, I'm going to show you what it looks like first. Basically, we're doing two uh, drawings. We draw a background, we scale it to the size of the screen, and then we draw this little jet here, and we move it across the screen. And then we loop back once it hits the uh, left side. So uh, this initialize function here is called from the activity main, which I mentioned with that uh, layout listener function. It passes the screen size. We use that to calculate uh, scaling of our graphics. In this case, I put all of my graphics in a drawable no DPI folder. That means Android won't try to scale the graphics automatically to whatever size it thinks it it should be. Uh, I've found that it's not exact and it's difficult to deal with when it, when using Android's automatically scaled graphics. So I just stick them in that no DPI folder. But let's see here. First, I've got the cloud bitmap that I load as a resource. Pretty simple. And then you've got the r.drawable, which is the link actual uh, number for that resource. And then you use the bitmap factory to code resource. It's pretty standard stuff. I get the size of that uh, bitmap. This So I can use uh, in the draw function, you need the source size. Move down to, let's see, destination, which I use the screen bounds. I'm basically just scaling the graphic without any type of consideration to the, rate, the uh, original ratio of the graphic. In this case, I don't really care, but you can always do a little extra calculations to get the proper ratio of your source graphic, if you would like to do that. We move down to the jet bitmap that I load the same way. And I also get the standard uh, size for that as the source. But the, here's the good stuff here is when I start scaling the image to fit the screen. So this should always scale properly to whatever screen size you have. In this case, I wanted it to be one-fifth the size of whatever screen is being used. And I should say, actually, by screen, I mean your view. So your view is likely not going to be the full screen, uh, either some special buttons, like in this case on the right here. Those are not included. And there's also a uh, top. You can have this removed in your... Uh, XML files, but it's basically from here to here that I get that full size to use. Anyways, I use one fifth of that to get my uh, jets scaled width. And then I calculate a height for that based on the width that I just figured out. And then I scale that properly to the source bitmap size. So you can calculate all that or figure all this out by looking at the code on GitHub, playing around with it. It's relatively simple. Uh, I do some typecasting here 
because at least I've noticed with Java that it's really picky when you're doing divisions uh, with integers. So I push the, I turn these into floats so I can get some what I expect to happen with uh, the calculations. Just getting the scaled height. And then we position the jet on the screen here, right in the middle is a starter position. All of this in the initialize function only happens once per uh, re basically if I were to exit out of this application and jump back in this initialize would happen again. But in this case it's only going to happen once when we start the application as long as we leave it running. Here is the uh, starter position just using uh, off, we start off screen to the right, and then we are just add. Of course, if you've dealt with a rect type, uh, I don't know, is it a structure in Java? I'm not sure. Some type of class. The rect is basically left, right, top, and bottom. And then you have to define the right as the left plus the width. You might be able to actually change width itself. I'm not sure, although it looks like it's a function. And then we position the horizontal based on uh, the half of the screen minus half of the width of our scale graphic. That way we can get it right in the middle instead of down slightly up or down. And then here's the main draw function. This, I believe, gets called automatically at some point, but we also use this to draw our, uh, have our full game loop. In this case, I have a relatively simple way to try to get the ticks of your drawing or the every the, your, your refresh rate to happen relatively frequently at the same rate. That way you don't get strange uh, motion or if you were doing a game that relies on uh, any type of timing, it will be relatively correct. There's a little bit more that you could do probably uh, to make sure based on time that any calculations you do are specifically based on time. In this case, I don't do that, but uh, it's always an option. So we get the current milliseconds using the system clock uptime in milliseconds. And then we do a calculation based on our previous uh, draw. And we figure out the difference of milliseconds between the two. And then down towards the bottom, I'll get to that. But here we draw the uh, cloud graphic in the background. And then we do the jet graphic right here with this block of code. In this case, we tried to move the jet to the left based on a, I forgot to mention, I calculated a scaled movement speed. Based on the size of the screen, I just said, okay, every for every refresh, we want it to move 1 50th of uh, the size of the screen. And just in case, if one fiftieth is less than less than or equal to zero, we just set it to one, just so that it moves. And then we uh, draw the bitmap for that jet. And towards the, uh, this area here, we make sure that once the jet is fully uh, on this side, we loop it back around so that it keeps moving. Relatively simple stuff and game programming. And here, this is all based on uh, doing that refresh rate, at least hopefully every 50 milliseconds in my case. I have a variable up here where I define what I hope to have the refresh interval at. So 50 milliseconds. Go back down here. This right here checks to see if your view is 
visible at the current moment. We don't want to try to be doing any pushing of uh, function, you know, putting things on the, I don't know, is it called the stack or something? That, uh, so it would not continuously try to update the screen when it's not visible. So if I were to uh, exit out of this app, it would see this and say, okay, we're not going to be posting any more events to uh, or any invalidations to that. And use these post delayed and post uh, things of the view itself. So that's based, these are, are part of the Android view system. And we do a new runnable for each one and just do an invalidate when we decide that uh, we should be updating the screen. Relatively simple. Like I mentioned, you want to also probably make this all time based just in case so your movement will be exact to what you would expect that's about it for all of this pretty simple game loop if you found it useful in some way i'm scott of thewavecoding.com thanks